you're on your way to better days, will you put your hands together for the Lord? <laughs> Hallelujah. Tell two people around you, my status is changing. I can't hear you say, my status is changing. No more decline. I'm on my way to better days. Father, we want to say thank you for this morning. Thank you for keeping your church. Thank you for keeping our families. And Lord, we say we are grateful. And Lord, we declare and we proclaim before you today that our status is changing. Amen. Our business is changing. Amen. We are gaining speed. Amen. We are gaining acceleration Amen. in all areas of our lives. Amen. Teach us this day. Amen. We give you praise. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Will you put your hands together for the Lord? Give Jesus a shout of praise this morning. Hallelujah. Welcome your neighbor to your right and left. Tell them, welcome to church. God bless you. All right, you may be seated. Okay. I love that music. My status is changing. Things are getting better for me. I don't know about you. It can only get better. I'm better and better the scripture says the part of a righteous man is as what i can't hear is as what a shining light how does it shine brighter and brighter and brighter unto the perfect day so things are getting better for me uh, do you have an apology to say that so if you believe it say it loud and clear things are getting better okay it's our season of acceleration and I'm trusting God that even in our businesses there shall be acceleration Amen. in Jesus precious name Amen. so in the remaining few minutes we have this morning how to accelerate your business okay uh, it's our business class so we'll do a bit on that before we'll go into the second and the third service today trusting God for blessings for favor and for his flow of grace over our lives in Jesus name great testimonies during the weekend um, we did card dedication for two people and, um, I'm trusting God that God will yet increase us he will yet bless us if that prayer looks like you your amen will be better it's my turn you know the scripture says when it was the turn of Esther to go into the king so it's turn by turn when your turn comes you can't be denied so say to yourself it's my turn, it's my turn. in jesus name Amen. all right how to accelerate your business um let's see proverbs 31 verse 16 proverbs chapter 31 and verse 16 she considered a field and buy it it with the fruit of her hands, she planted a vineyard. This is talking about the, the virtuous woman. She's not just virtuous in character. She's also very good in her behavior. She's, she's an entrepreneur. She works. Don't forget our slogan for this year. Everyone must what? I can't hear you. Everyone must what? Do something. Tell the person beside you, do something. <laughs> You must lay your hand on something. You are not permitted this year to be without something. You are not permitted. You are not permitted. Everyone must lay hand on something. If God is going to bless you, the scripture says he will bless the works of your hands. So you must get something to do. So she considered a field and buys it. And with the fruit of her hand, she planted a vineyard. Okay, an entrepreneur must pay the prices that is needed in achieving speed in the marketplace. An entrepreneur must pay the price involved. You must pay the price involved. That tells you there are prices to pay. You don't just pray for your business to speed up. You don't just pray for increase of speed or acceleration in your business place without paying the price. Tell the person beside there is a price to pay. Uh, so in the marketplace, uh, I started praying uh, some two weeks ago. Uh, it just dropped in my mind. I started praying, Lord, this is the generation where the vision of everyone is speaking. My vision will not be silent. 
I don't know about you. Say my vision, my vision. will not be silent. Not you know, this, the scripture says at the end, it shall speak. Uh, so vision must speak. So I'm praying the vision for your business also will speak. Amen. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Okay, I have about 12 tips. Let's see if we can go through before the time is out. Number one, the first tip for acceleration in business. Clear your calendar of all projects clear your calendar of all projects and commitment that puts you off track this is so important entrepreneurs you must learn how to handle distractions you are supposed to deliver you have a project at hand that you're supposed to deliver in the next two days and suddenly your friend is doing birthday in Kaduna I say, ah, he's my best friend. I must, I must, I must. You disappoint, you disappointed your client. Instead of him getting what he wanted at that time, you say, oh God, please, next one week. Before the end of that one week, your best friend too. You know, people can have many best friends. Huh? Three, four, five, six best friends. BFF, Abi? Best friend forever. You are very foolish. Because if you understand, you will know there is no best friend forever. How true is that? Uh, there is no best friend forever. Can we be very practical? There is no forever best friend. How oh, this best friend forever? You are lying. You are joking. <laughs> you soon understand that the one that you think is best friend forever today can even be the one, the reason why your business is not even going fine. Uh, somebody came to my office on Saturday and we got praying and she, she said, sir, please pray for me. My husband left me and um, she's married to somebody else. Sorry, he's married to somebody else and he's not even taking care of my kids. So I was like, what kind of a man is that? Okay, did he marry another younger lady? No, he said no. He went uh, and married uh, a woman with three children. He's taking care of the three kids of that one. And he's not taking care of his own only child that he had with the woman, with the lady that came to the office. So she brought the picture on her phone where she and that lady snapped a very beautiful picture. I said, ah, let's enjoy your photo. He said, ah, pastor, she's my best friend. <laughs> he said, the lady will come to the house, she will entertain her, she will even spend weekend. I said, mm, good, good, good. You are very, very foolish. <laughs> <laughs> she's not foolish very very foolish our foolishness brought cost her that so an entrepreneur must know how to clear calendar face your project face your commitment are we together whatever takes you off track clear it clear it parties social things <laughs> can I add this to it you must even also know how to handle social media Am I talking? You, you are, you're meshing, you're sewing something, and you're watching YouTube. Does the two go together? <laughs> Matthew 6.22. Matthew 6.22. The light of the body is the eyes. If therefore the eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of what light what is that focus say focus that's the power of focus mind distraction and stay focused on the main project mind distraction stay focused on the main project mind distraction stay focused on the main project this is very very important Number two is like it. Number two, eliminate delays. Eliminate what? Delays. Anything that can cause the delay of your promise to your client, watch it and cut it off. Anything. To your business, your clients are very important. How true is that? You delay in delivery of your promises you will lose that one 
Can you see? It's a stupid entrepreneur that will say, it's just you. Will I kill myself because of one client? Uh, one client can turn your business around. And one client can bring it down. So you go extra mile to make sure you deliver us when necessary. We live in instant society. We live in what? Instant society. Instant. Instant society. Everybody wants everything now. Sharp, sharp. So take off delay and deliver at what? The right time. If you are believing for acceleration, you want speed and you delay in delivery. Uh, that can happen. That can happen. Very important. Look at this. Clients, what they want when they want it. Media help us. Clients want what they want when they want it. How true is that statement? Very true. I said customers are always right, isn't it? You are out there for them and you must satisfy them. Clients want what they want when they want it, not when you want it. You are the producer of the product. They receive the product and they want it when they want it. Not, one, not when, when you are willing to release it to them. If you are making a product for me, maybe um, my tailor, my shoemaker, or whatever, if I want it on Tuesday, don't tell me, oh God, you can only get it on Friday. I'll look for somebody else. They say, I could possibly say, I could read in Tuesday. You have lost me. When you are saying it's not possible, it can't be ready on Tuesday, somebody else will say, sir, I will deliver on Monday night. We live in instant society. People want it when? Now. If I can get it right now, so give it to me. Please, fasting and prayer does not undo this one. <laughs> Spiritual brother, makatakata. Speaking in tongues does not undo this one. <laughs> You have to be swift at work. Tell your neighbor you have to be swift at work. I hate slow people. Sorry, I don't hate people. But I, I find it hard to connect with slow people. Now, let me use that language. I find it hard to connect with what? Slow people. I hate repeating myself again and again on the same thing to the same person over and over. When I tell you something once, you should catch it. If I have a problem telling you the same thing again and again, I will change it. Because there are many things to achieve. So we can't be spending too much time on one thing. You're blessed. Uh, okay. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Proverbs 22, verse 13. Proverbs 22, 13. Proverbs 2, 2, verse 1 and 3. The slothful man see it. There is a lion on the road. <laughs> a slothful man see it. There is a lion without. I shall be slain where? In the street. You see the excuse of a lazy man. Everybody is going out, going to walk. A lazy man say, ah! They said there is a lion at the road, on the road. If you go out. You know why he's saying that? He's making what? Excuse for himself. Please, can I have this in other translation? Is it possible? Okay. The loafer says there is a lion on the loose. If I go out, I'll be eating alive. Who is a loafer? A lazy man. Another translation. The sluggard says there is a lion outside or I'll be murdered in the street. Yes. The lazy man claims. Aha. Uh -huh. I think I like this one. A lazy man what? Claims. There is a lion out there. If I go out, I might be killed. When you are lazy, you don't want to do something, you find excuses for not what? Doing it. I love that. Uh, uh, that I don't know if it's a quote. I don't know. But we've had our parents say it many times. No food for... <laughs> Is it a quote? Huh? Is that a quote or somebody just came up with that? Is a saying, uh, is an, is a fact or a saying. 
Okay, it's in the book of Elders, chapter what? Verse what? <laughs> chapter 4, verse 1. Okay, Maculate has one at home, so it's telling her. <laughs> A lazy man claims <laughs> lion is outside. Say, they say there is riot in Oshodi, so sleep. <laughs> he's here in Alimosho area and he's afraid of the lion where? In Oshodi. What has Osho the lion got to do with? What has Osho the lion got to do with uh, Ali Moshoshob? <laughs> you can know he doesn't have something to do. Hey, Nin, can she? I mean, if your store is in the same Osho the area and you really, really want to do business, you still go out and do it. But the lazy man says, no, 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 no. Something is outside, it will kill you. So. Number three, I love this one. This one is a good advice. Number three, stop doing what's not working. Do you get that? Stop doing what's what? Is not working. Many people have emotional attachment to many things. Do you understand that? I've been doing it, so why will I stop it now and start looking for something else? This is the only thing I know to do. And you've been doing it for five years? And it's not working. Do you need five years to do something before you know how to do it? Whatever is not working, then what? Stop it. Do you even know as a pastor, I have to stop some program, change some things in the church? Do you notice as a change with our Wednesday service now? Huh? Uh huh. It's innovation. I have to sit down with my pastor and say, and you're long. This thing, what do we do? We can't scrape Wednesday service. We can't cancel Bible study. But what can we do? How can we improve on it that we can still put the strength of our ministry so that people can still come who will teach? How many of you were in Wednesday service last week? I taught for one hour. And if it was the normal Bible study, we want to teach for one hour. Hmm. I live sure people will not come to church. So you have to improvise. An entrepreneur must know how to fulfill, how to still meet the needs of his client while you are also fulfilling what you are supposed to do. Stop doing what is not working. Stop it. If it's not working, then find another way to make it work. Am I speaking to us now? This is so, so important. Don't, don't be emotionally attached to people, to things, to locations. Am I talking to us? Oh, come on. Am I talking to us? Some are just emotionally attached to a location. Say, this is where I started the business. Why will I live there? And it's not working there. Every market has a geography. Do you get that? You must understand the geography of your market or your product. Can't be exporting generator from Nigeria to UK. Huh? The Holy Ghost is leading me. Fine. What's the leading, sir? The Holy Spirit said, I should take generator, export generator to United Kingdom. Brother, brother, I received another word from the Holy Ghost. You are a failure already. How true is that? Very true. So check yourself what I'm doing now. Is it working? And is it working like I really want it to work? Because sometimes the ratio at it is working is not more than 10%. And say something is still coming. No, 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 no. A successful entrepreneur wants to have at least 75 to 80% achievement in his product. How true is that? Very true. So you don't just relax. Don't spend time on projects and ideas that are not working or outdated. Some ideas are outdated. Don't just get stuck on them. I remember I was teaching um, my youth in CAC church then on business strategies. And I'm telling, I, I remember the teaching I said, um, don't, don't be outdated in your line of business. Learn the new way. At, uh, uh, learn the new market trend and the new ways. So then I said, for example, I was just saying the, Example, for example, uh, uh, at that season, we were changing from monologue to analog, petrol stations, petrol, all our, is this supply tank, they call it now, pump, all our petrol uh, pump at 
the filling stations. We are changing from, you know analog now? It used to be analog, you be pumping, you know. So then we were changing from analog to digital, where you just press, pam, 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 put it there, and you are doing something else. The whole thing is dispensing itself. So this brother used to, his major work is to repair the analog. All right? That's what he learned from his boss, and that's the only thing he knows to do. So he came to me and complained, sir, this thing is not working. People are not coming. No customers. I pray for me that he's back to my father's house. You know, people always think every failure is is attached to one demon or the other. You are a believer. Believe God and with all your fasting and prayers that no power can just tie you down unnecessarily. Am I speaking to you now? So if things are not working, don't look at the spiritual aspect first. Check how am I doing it? Am I doing it right? If you are not doing it right and you want to have a good result in it, you are just joking. So I asked him. I said, do you know how to operate, how to repair the digital? He said, ah. He said, I don't know that one, no. I said, which one do you know how to repair? He said, the analog. You know? I said, oh, God, that's the reason why you are not getting businesses. He said, leave this one. Go back. Retrain yourself on how to repair the digital. Now, if you know how to repair the digital, you will see that business will what? Improve. So, he was on the line of business, but he has become what? Outdated. He's already outdated. It? I think if you're into a fashion business, you will know that one of the things that changes almost every six months is fashion. How true is that? Very true. The kind of suit we wear those days is different from the kind of suit we wear now. Sometime, sometime ago, it was keep Lagos clean baggy trouser how many of you had some baggy trouser those days how many of you uh, uh you had some cordial jeans those days wow i remember i used to have some one 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 brown cordial jean like that brown uh, is, is this brown is this brown huh a uh, cotton brown okay thank you thank you salute <laughs> i used to have cotton brown like that baggy ha Tio Deba Tichele. Well, you have some serious outing. Uh -huh. that is, that's when you bring it out. But right now, hmm, everybody's becoming Michael Jackson. <laughs> it's so tight, and it won't even turn. Pastor I came home one last week. I was like, ah, what is wrong with Pastor? <laughs> but as funny as it looks, that's the way now. You can't be in 21st century and you are living like you are 1977. You can't do business like that and expect acceleration. Are we getting it? There is a new way to do what you are doing. So go for the new way. Get it. Go for it. Get it. How many of you know the shoe they call Sobla Gongo? Menu Bemu. <laughs> okay, you don't know. The, the older ones will know. You know those shoes that come up like this. Sobla Gongo. <laughs> there used to be a time that that's the hint thing. If your shoe is not facing the sky, it's not a good shoe. <laughs> But if you're wearing that now, they'll look at you and say, huh? Hmm. Some time ago, if you wear, uh, for example, our service next week is freestyle. That is a dress code for next week's service, our fun and family Sunday. Freestyle. Hmm. Next month is going to be color blocking. Let's go there, right? On every third Sunday now, we are going to have what is called fun and family Sunday. Uh, so, um, okay. <laughs> Somebody say, what's that again? Just hold on. <laughs> just hold on. Just tell the person beside you, just flow. When you see somebody wearing a native trouser, Ankara trouser, and he's wearing a t-shirt on it, some time ago, he's like, is he crazy? But right now, he's the thing. 
<laughs> okay, you're going to see something like that next week. Praise God. <laughs> Somebody's already thinking. Hmm. So the trend is changing. That's just it. You want to succeed in business now. You must follow the trend. Number four. Hmm. Find the exact type of work and market that make you feel good. You know why this is important? If you don't find the market and the kind of business that make you feel good, you are going to look very old and unhappy doing business. This is very important. If you don't like what you are doing, your success rate is reduced by 50%. Do you get that? Do you get that? If you don't like what you are doing, your success rate is reduced by what? 50% without, you've not started, but you're already a failure 50% because you don't like it. People hardly succeed in what they don't like. So make sure your product, your market, your business is what excites you. Somebody came to me and said, ah, you joke a lot on the other. I said, okay now, this is my only job. If I'm not happy doing what I'm doing, you'll be looking old while you're still young. Be happy with what you're doing and do it how? Well. Never engage in what doesn't excite you. It's, it's one of the principles for life, not only for entrepreneurs. Never engage in what doesn't excite you. Be specific about what you want and what? Achieve it. In fact, in the business world today, you must learn to customize your business to fit your talent and strength. Customize your what? Your business to fit your talent and strength. This is my talent. This is my strength. So any business I'm going to do must be able to combine both. So if you, have, if you have fun doing it and you are succeeding doing it, that's when you are doing the right business. Can you imagine? These great footballers, all they do is just to enjoy playing around and they make a lot of money. How true is that? Very true. Very true. Very true. Never allow anybody to push down your truth what you don't like to do. Somebody said the work, the job is boring. Excuse me, you signed up for it. They weren't closing your eyes when you were picking the form to sign up for it. You signed up for it. So it's the moment you sign up for it, you stay with it. You stay with it. Number five. Number five. Create a massive network with people. You can't succeed alone. You can't succeed alone. Even if you are Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you still need 12 disciples. How true is that? And out of the 12 disciples, you still need some three core people Peter, James, and John. You can't succeed alone. Pastor Blessing can never succeed alone. I need good people around me. And sometimes the success of an organization is not only the success of the set man, it's the success of the team around him. If you're a leader of an organization or a business or, an uh, or, or, or a business house, you are not necessarily supposed to be the best there. You just have to have a team of best people or good people that can work with you to achieve what you want to achieve create a massive network of people you can never never succeed alone your business cannot grow in a vacuum hmm. underline that three times your business cannot grow in the vacuum the more people know about you and respect your work the easier is it for you to fast forward your business growth Luke chapter 5 and verse 7. Luke chapter 5 and verse 7. When Peter got the miracle that broke the net. You remember the story? They toiled all night. They caught nothing. So Luke chapter 5 verse 7. And they beckoned unto their what? Partners. Say partners. partners. Say partners. partners. They beckoned unto their partners which were what? In the other sheep. And they sh that they should come and what? help them so partners help you you need network with people 
you need network with people and they came and filled both ships so that they began to sink he couldn't handle it alone he needed people to work with him it can start as a sole proprietor you're doing it all alone but as your business begins to grow you know yourself you can't succeed alone but please be mindful when you choose the team that surrounds you we're still going to do that how to choose a great team for your organization because many of us have made uh, some big errors you know he's my brother he's my friend he's my this and you bring them into the business and the business goes down i was discussing with some men yesterday after um uh on saturday and one of them said something happened to his boss he, he used to have a friend in germany and they uh, the friend lost his job uh, and came down to nigeria because they are bosom friends he just brought in the guy come come into my line of business and he made him the hedi just like that without interview without anything so the guy just took up laws into his hands and he started giving out some laws he got to a time uh, people were even seeing him as more <laughs> he's more bossy than the boss itself you understand what i'm talking about he gives everybody instruction and he just uh, one day in a board meeting he said the, the guy just called him and said see uh we don't have your bio data we need all your information please you're also an employee here and you must submit to the rules he gave him the form and the guy stood up in the meeting and said i can't feel any form is it his fault no so i can't feel any form we own this business together i said no i brought you mind how you bring people in into business am i speaking to you am i speaking to you is my brother is my this is my dad can cause a lot of problems i think we're going to deal with that maybe next week or two weeks we're going to talk on that how to get a great team for your for your business okay number what now number six develop good customer service your business can only go as far as your customers do you get that your business can only go as far as your customer so you must develop good customer service one satisfied customer can open up your business around to others and of course one customer that is not satisfied can also destroy a lot of things something happened in church somebody was asked to move forward and the person got really 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 angry and decided to leave yeah that is childish on the on the side of the person but the pastor had to follow her downstairs i said no you can't go <laughs> she struggled she left the following week he went back to him to her again greeted her. you know we must just satisfy people you don't leave an unsatisfied unsatisfied customer and just say hey, you should be just one go if you want to go 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 mm. one will go two will go three will go before you know it you have lost all customers they say customers are always right have you heard that yes. even when they are wrong even when they are what even when they are very very wrong they are still what right you still have to see rightness in their wrong <laughs> otherwise you'll be out of business pretty soon this is so so important okay never underestimate the power of customers treat them well and enjoy speed in business number seven market development market what development okay expand your existing product into new market territories this is so important expand your existing product okay you are producing shoe you're producing maclean you're producing uh, toothpaste you're producing uh, whatever you're producing expand it into new markets into new areas and these new markets are two dimensions the new market can be what an industry related or geographical are you getting it maybe you are taking your market from you are taking your product sorry from a paja area to uh, uh island okay you are expanding the existing product but you must understand if you are expanding your product from one area to another from one geographical area to another geographical area you must know that a simple packaging or rebranding is very important how true is that if you sell bottle water here and the bottle water this how you package it if you are taking it from my boy and you want to start selling the same product on the island you must repackage you must repackage because the understanding of the people there 
is more than the people here the kind of things they like how they want their things to be done is quite different if I car dealer there are some cars that sells very quickly here but if you take them to the island nobody's going to buy it it's just going to stay there for a long time and there are some cars you bring them down here it's going to take a longer time somebody bought the car and said pastor please pray for me i want to sell the car it's a tokumbo car and I, after praying on it i said how much is there 18 million 18 million i said very good i said where is your store who is selling it for you someone guy in the at uh, around alimosha i said he won't sell it can we just be practical how many alimosha people will take 18 million naira to buy one car on this bad road it's stupidity now can you buy 18 million naira car and drive it on rough road like this You get such a car, you go to where you can enjoy them. So a simple repackaging or, or product modification can lead to greater what? growth. You just change the bottle and people love it better. Have you noticed all this soft drink, like two years, three years, they just do a little tweet on their bottle. And because it looks different, children love it more. People love it more. Just a little tweet. So don't just keep doing the same thing the same way and expect different results. Maybe a simple logo or something. Just change, just, just tweet something about your business. And um, number eight, let me rush now because of time. Polishing your entrepreneurial skill. You must keep polishing your skill. What you learned yesterday may be absolute already. Proverbs 22, verse 6 to 7. Proverbs 22 says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he's old, he will not depart from it. Please, media, give me that scripture. Now go to verse 7. Go to verse 7. Everybody read this. Want to go? The rich ruleth over the poor, and the borrower is a servant to the lender. Excuse me. The rich ruleth over the poor, and the borrower. So there are two people here, right? The rich and the poor, the servant and the lender. Two different categories of people. So what determines their riches or their poverty? Verse 6. Verse 6. What's the first word there? Train. Train. So your training, majority of the time, determines the lot you fall into. The Bible says the rich and the poor meet together. The Lord God made them both. The Bible didn't say the Lord God made them so. So the Lord God did not make one rich and made one poor by simple training and retraining one became poor sorry one became rich while the one that doesn't give himself to training became what poor if you want to increase your earnings somebody says increase your what learning don't just fast and pray train up yourself very simple uh, uh, principle but very important Train and retrain until you reach expert status for the growth and increase that you desire. And please, under that, invest on your staffs. Number nine, reduce unnecessary expenses. Reduce unnecessary expenses. I've told us before, please spend more, t spend more on assets than liabilities. Do you remember that? Upward spiral investment and downward spiral investment. So, please... Um, don't just spend don't be a money drift or spend drift sorry as an entrepreneur you won't you won't go far then number 10 achieve your annual goals achieve your what your annual goals that means you must have annual goals where you want your company to be in the next six months the next one hour you must sorry the next one year you must have that proverbs chapter 13 and verse 19 proverbs 13 19 says the desire accomplished is sweet to the soul hmm, i love this scripture a desire accomplished is what sweet to the soul so when you plan something that you achieve it uh it's sweet to you it gives you confidence it gives you strength to go for more so set achievable goals and focus on achieving them within the time allotted entrepreneurs must learn to set yearly goals set goals for your business and make sure you stay with it until you achieve them please this is very 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 important stay with it and what and achieve them 
set annual goals. Stay with your goals and make sure you achieve them. 11, as we round off today, engage in kingdom principles. Engage in what? In kingdom principles. You are a child of God. There is a way to do business. I want acceleration in my business. I must engage the kingdom, the principles of the kingdom of God. One of them is your tithing. The scripture says concerning Abraham that Abraham paid the tithe of all. And even the ones that work with him. So I've always told people from the standpoint of the scripture, you own an organization, your tithe is one. The tithe of your entire organization is another thing. I pay tithe individually. This church pays tithe from every tithe that come in. It doesn't matter who is shouting on the internet. The, the word of God is still... Am I talking to you now? The word of God determines what I do. All right? Number next under that is take care of your staffs, please. Under kingdom principle, take care of your what? Your staffs. Give me 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 18. This is so, so, so important. 1 Timothy 5 18. For the scripture saith, Thou shalt not muzzle the horse. That's what? trended how the corn can you see that thou shall not muzzle the what the ox that treaded out the corn and everybody read the last sentence the laborer is worthy of his what of his what of his reward if you're bringing in anybody into your organization let them know how much they're going to earn okay i'm going to give you fifty thousand I'm going to give you 120,000. This is going to be your salary. And the moment you slate their salary, make sure you are not owing them. An hungry worker is an hungry worker. Don't hold no one. And lastly, lastly on that same point, engage kingdom principles, help the poor. I've told you here if you have an organization, partner with an NGO that takes care of the poor that takes care of widows, that takes care of abandoned babies. Are we getting that? Partner with them. Let something leave your organization every year, like yearly, to help the poor. The more you do that, God blesses rest on that business. Don't let all the proceeds of that business only come to you. Spread it out. Help the poor. Help the motherless. Help the ones that have nothing to do. And we see God blessing you and taking you from level to level in Jesus' name. Amen. Say to yourself, I'm blessed. Stand to your feet as we round off today. Lift your two hands. Father, we give you praise and we thank you. I pray for someone's business today that the grace of the Lord for acceleration and for speed comes upon your life. Amen. Comes upon your business Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. From this day, every forces of delay is broken. Amen. Every forces of delay is broken. Amen. The hand of the Lord comes upon your business. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I don't know your vision or your desire. Can you lift your hands and begin to prophesy on your business? One minute, everybody, go ahead and do that. I believe you can pray better. Speak over your business. Speak over the work of your hand. Things are working together for good for me. In the name of Jesus Christ. Prophesy. Prophesy. Prophesy over your business in the name of Jesus. Mada bro, shati gazi Mastega, zugete, shande bratu, zati andosh. Madagodo zombrati shati katambra di gades. Ma shati aze keto zotombro di shati kazinda bradosh. how best you can pray for your business tell the Lord I speak against delay I speak against stagnation whatever is pulling down my business I break you down today in the name of Jesus <laughs> I receive acceleration I receive speed on my business Prophesy, prophesy, speak to the Lord. Tell the Lord I receive ideas, new ideas.
new ideas come on pray i receive new ideas to move my business to move my calling to another level in the name of jesus thank you lord in jesus mighty name we'll pray oh shout a better amen come on i like you to say to the lord i attract men money and materials to fulfill my calling you see i'd like you to know that being an entrepreneur is also a calling it's a calling not everybody is born to start a business but if you have gotten that ability to start one and start two and start three and you can manage three four things together it's a calling on your life i'd like you to pray to yourself to the lord for yourself say lord i receive so, sorry i attract men money and missionaries to accomplish my vision go ahead and begin to prophesy I attract men, money, materials, everything that is needed to fulfill my assignment to be a good entrepreneur. Lord, I attract men, I attract money, I attract material, I attract every goodness, every great thing of life. I receive new customers, great customers. I call forth partners. I call forth partners. I call forth men and women. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Pray this one is spiritual warfare. I say every embargo on my business. I break you now. There are some businesses or there are some people in their business no matter how they put in new things and do something new it's not just moving because there is something on it that says this thing cannot go beyond this every limitation over everyone's business and career i break them today ah, for service people you are not saying amen so i break that power today so i like you to pray say every embargo on my